This week in the biology lab, you're going to be using micropipettes. Micropipettes are equipment that biologists often use for doing biochemical reactions. They're used for measuring very small volumes of liquid, things like nucleic acids, which we're going to use in lab. We're going to be isolating DNA. Or you could be pipetting radioactive substances or bacteriological substances, bacteria or viruses. So it's very important to learn how to use them accurately and safely. In lab, we're going to be using three different sizes of micropipettes. A P20, and you'll notice that on the top of the plunger, it has the size of the pipette. It says P20. This delivers 2 microliters to 20 microliters of fluid. We'll also be using a P200. Again, P200 is listed on the top of the plunger. P200s are used for measuring 20 microliters to 200 microliters of fluid. The last size micropipette that we'll be using is the P1000. Notice that that says P1000 on the plunger, and it measures 200 to 1,000 microliters of fluid accurately. Each of the pipetters has a series of three numbers on the barrel. And this is how you set the volume that you want to use. Some of the numbers are black and some will be red. The red numbers indicate that you have to be alert. We'll start with the P200 first because that's the easiest one to set. On the P200, you have three black numbers on the dial. And essentially, what you see is what you get. If the pipetter is set at 100, that will measure 100 microliters. If you wanted 200 microliters, you would set it at 200. 50 microliters would be 050. To set the pipette, you turn the barrel until the numbers appear in the window for the volume that you want. So I'm going to set this at 100 microliters, or 100. Now let's look at the P1000. The P1000 also has three numbers, but notice that the top number is in red. So that's an alert signal. The top number is not 100s, it's thousands. So 100 is not 100 microliters, it's 1,000 microliters. If you wanted 500 microliters, that would be 050 on the P1000. So remember, the red number is thousands, and you have to make sure that you know how to set the pipette when you are setting your volume. The third pipette that we'll be using is the P20, which measures accurately 2 microliters to 20 microliters. This also has three numbers on the barrel. But notice that the bottom number is in red. That is an alert that tells you that bottom number is tenths. So there's a decimal point before that number. So if it, the dial reads 100, that stands for 10.0 or 10 microliters. If you wanted to measure 2 microliters, you'd set the dial on 0, 2, 0. Just for your information, your lab manual in the appendix also has the directions for how to set the pipettes, and it also has diagrams of each of the pipettes. So if you need that, you can, you can look at that in lab and remind yourself how these pipettes should be set. It's very important to set the pipette correctly, or else you might be pipetting the wrong amount of liquid, and therefore your biochemical reaction is not going to work very well. Now I'm going to show you how to actually use the pipettes to measure a specified volume. I want you to notice that the pipettes are color coded and that on the top of the plunger you'll see either a yellow dot on the P20 and the P200 you have a yellow dot on the plunger. On the P1000 you have a blue dot. The, this color coding tells you which size and which color pipette tips to use. If your micropipette has a blue dot, you use the larger blue tips. If your micropipette has a yellow dot on the top, you use the smaller yellow tips. 
In lab, because we're going to be using DNA, we don't want to contaminate our samples with anything on our hands. Sometimes your hands have DNases and RNases, which could destroy nucleic acids. So we're going to wear gloves to do our pipetting. And you should always wear gloves if you're using anything toxic or any microbiologicals, such as bacteria or, or viruses, because you don't want to contaminate yourself or the sample. I'm going to use the P200, and we're going to pipette 100 microliters. So I've set this to 100 microliters, 100, and I'm going to put a yellow tip on the micropipette. Press the micropipette down onto the tip. You don't even have to touch the tip. Lift it out of the box, and then you just might want to make sure that the tip is tight. You want it to be tight because if it's loose, you might pull up bubbles or the tip might fall off. The other thing to notice about the pipettes is that there are two stops on the plunger. This is the plunger. If you press the plunger to the first stop, it goes down pretty easily. If you press the plunger to the second stop, it's a little bit harder. And I'll tell you what that's for as we go through the demonstration for how to use it. One other thing to remember is you never want to touch the tip of your pipette to the table or touch it with your, with your gloved hands or touch it to anything else except the reagents that you're using because, you, again, you don't want to contaminate the environment and you don't want the environment to contaminate your sample. Another thing you should never do is turn your pipette tip up like this. If you do that, the fluid in the tip will flow down into the pipetter. It will contaminate the pipette. And if you're using radioactivity or bacteriologicals, that means we now have to take the pipette apart, clean it out, and start over and recalibrate it. So always hold your pipette tip in this position or at an angle with the tip down. So we're going to take some of our sample. You're going to depress the plunger to the first stop. Put the pipette tip into the fluid. And you want to make sure that your tip is below the surface of the fluid, well below the surface of the fluid. You don't want to get the pipetter itself wet. You don't want it to go in too deep. But you want it to go in deep enough so that when you pull up the liquid into the tip, you're not sucking up air. You don't want to get bubbles in the tip. So I pushed it down to the plunger to the first stop. My pipette tip is under the surface of the fluid. I'm now going to slowly release the plunger and pull my sample up into my pet, pipette tip. I now have 100 microliters of accurately measured sample in my pipette tip. I'll then take a microfuge tube, and I will put the tip into the tube, and I will now depress the plunger again and release the sample into the tube. And you may be able to see that there's just a tiny, tiny drop, hardly even noticeable, still left in the tip of the pipette. This is where you depress it to the second stop to push out that last drop. When you've finished adding your solution to the tube, you will eject the tip into the waste bucket by pressing down on the tip ejector. This way, you never actually have to touch the tip from the time that you take it out of the tip box until the time that you have finished your pipetting. And that way, if you're working with toxic chemicals or bacteriologicals, you're not going to get contaminate anything. Something that biologists often do when they're pipetting is they look at what they're pipetting, and they check to make sure that they've pipetted the right amount in the tip. In other words, once I've pipetted 100 microliters over and over, I know what 100 microliters looks like in the tip. So I should be checking the tip to make sure that there are no bubbles and that we have 100 microliters in the tip. You should also check your test tubes. To, if you're pipetting multiple tubes with the same volume, you can check the tubes to make sure that all of the tubes are the same volume. And if they're not the same volume, you can redo that tube and make sure that you don't make a mistake uh, before you go any further with your experiment. So you should always check the volume 
as you're pipetting and check the volume in your tube when you're finished. In lab, you'll be able to have time to practice all these um, activities before you actually do the experiments. And thanks for watching and we'll see you in lab.